Okay, in this video we're going to talk all about collision. Uh, while most of the rest of my scripts are useful for artists, this one is really useful for, for uh, level designers who have to make collision for uh, games. Um, I wrote a little form for the uh, script I'm going to show you here. So we'll have to open a new window, um, go to form view, Oops, let's go down to, you should see a collision entry in this list here. And this is the form that I wrote. Um, now, let's have a look at these books. And you can see that there's a lot of them. And if we were to just show how much collision data this stuff would take up, which is, and mind you, this is just one room here. Um, let's set the polygons. That's forty-three. No, that's forty-four thousand polygons worth of just books in this one room, which is only a little fraction of the entire scene. So we want to really get rid of a lot of this uh, extra data because you don't need it for uh, for games. Most games, the the actual amount of memory that a collision takes up versus uh, render data is actually much higher. Um, so let's have a look at get reducing these books down. So I'm just going to use these uh, purple books just to make sure the because the script can get pretty slow on big scenes so I'm just going to just do these here. Um, so for this, basically, what I really want is a box around all these books that is aligned to to each book. So if you go to this form here, uh, you want primitive, that's fine. What you want is aligned. Uh, you can also have axial. What axial will do is it will just basically make a, a box around the bounding, the bounding box of each set of connected polygons. But uh, really, uh, most of the time, you'll probably want axial. Um, connected polygons, if I was to turn connected polygons off here, it will basically do a, a line box around all these polygons here. So basically, you'll, you'll see one big, gigantic uh, box. But for this, we want every single box. So we'll just use connected polygons. Um, we don't want to reduce yet. And make. And I just did it on Axial. <laughs> that is not what I wanted. Uh, let's just undo that. At least it'll, it shows you what the actual Axial does, but let's do Aligned. Oh, and let's also turn on uh, Delete Source Geometry. What that does is it basically just deletes the polygons, um, so you don't have to go through and delete them yourself. And you can see how slow this can get for a big scene, but it's worth it. It's much slower to do it the other way. Usually what I would do for this scene is basically open up the UV view, and using the UV view, because all of these are high poly meshes, they'll all be, um, well, they all have the same UV, so you can basically just select the polygons in the UV view, and it'll select all of the polygons for that mesh, and you can just merge them together. But this is much faster. You can see that it's, basically put a little a line box around everything. So that's that. Um, the next thing let's have a look at is the convex hull. Um, for physics, for physics parts, usually most things like Havoc and, and uh, Agia uh, use convex hulls for a fairly complex geometry. Um, let's open up the model here. Now say I wanted to make all this debris fall down for some bridge collapse or whatever. Um, what you want for that is a convex hull, and usually you want it to have 
as little polygons as possible. So that's where this reduce tool comes handy. You can turn that on and it'll actually create whatever convex hull and it'll reduce it down. Um, well, I won't explain what a convex hull is, I'll just show you, it's much better to, oops, just show you um, a line that's not going to matter, let's do it. Okay, you can see it's created this 16 polygon convex representation of whatever polygons that you actually gave it. And that is really useful because, yeah, I mean, doing this all manually, you can either try and reduce it or just make it yourself, but it's very time consuming. So this little tool here might also save me a lot of time. Um, you can also make different primitives for, for say for instance, um, you have beer bottles and you want to make a, a, line beer, a lined uh, cylinder around a bunch of beer bottles, you can use that as well. Um, use parts, you don't really need to know about that because that's mainly if you want to actually have different materials for each one of these parts for whatever engine, usually you'll have to give it a different material name so whenever it imports it knows what what object is what. Um, that's what that is useful for. Um, the XYZ that's mainly for the cylinder tool to when you want to project the cylinder down different axis. And uh, that's that.